Hi everyone, this is going to be a video on the topic of Lewis model and we would discuss basically what the Lewis model is for covalent bonds. So what exactly is the Lewis model? Before we can talk about it, we need to first describe what we meant by a covalent bond. A covalent bond is basically a bond that is a result of sharing of electron as opposed to donation of electron, in this case sharing of valence electrons, between two nonmetals. Okay, so that's to be differentiated from an ionic bond where you have a metal and a nonmetal. Okay, and as you know uh, from our discussion of covalent bonds, there are two potential covalent bonds. You can have a polar covalent bond and you can also have a nonpolar covalent bond. Anytime you have sharing, you can have either a equal sharing, which is resulting in the nonpolar bond, or you can have unequal sharing, which results in the polar bond. Now, uh, the way to represent the covalent bond, the simplest way to do this, was proposed a while ago in the early 19th century by Gilbert Lewis, who was at the time at UC Berkeley, and he was actually also the person who coined the term photon for light particle when Einstein discovered uh, the identity of the photon and um, the photoelectric effect. So what exactly is the Lewis model for covalent bonds? Basically, uh, they are based on the following two concepts. The first one is that each atom has a valence electron uh, around the nucleus and only that valence electrons are involved in the covalent bond. Okay. So you can draw this, which I'll uh, illustrate in the next slide, uh, the number of valence electrons around each atom. The second important point, which is really the basis for the bonding that he would propose for all kinds of different covalent molecules, is that each of the atoms in your molecule will basically share its valence electron with other atoms in such a way that all atoms have an electron configuration that is equal to a noble gas configuration. And as we discuss in Chapter 7 on quantum mechanics, the electron configuration of a noble gas is extremely low in energy, which is the basis for why the atoms in this molecule also want to obtain a noble gas configuration. This is most often known as the octet rule and the word octet here stands for eight and the reason for that is because when you look at noble gases they tend to have eight valence electrons and as a result the octet rule is developed because the idea is every atom in a molecule would want to have eight electrons eight valence electrons the only exception is hydrogen the only atom that only needs two electrons because the closest noble gas to hydrogen is helium, okay? So for hydrogen then only needs two electrons. So sometimes you'll hear this term duet rule, where duet represents two electrons, and that's only applicable to hydrogen. So how do we draw these valence electrons on the atom? These are drawings that you might have seen before, so I'm going to show it to you again here. This is from your lecture slide. And what you, I want to point out here is that the way Lewis represents these valence electrons is by these dots, as I'm sure you've seen before. So a lot of times the model is often called the Lewis dot model. Okay, so you might take, you might have taken a class where somebody called it the electron dot or the Lewis dot model. But usually we just call it the Lewis structure. And we, each uh, atom is represented by its symbol, which is lithium, for example, will be Li. Something like oxygen would be an O. And then you'll have a dot that represents the valence electron, and depending on how many valence electrons you have, you're going to have that same number of dots. So, for example, here we're going through the second period elements, which is really the best set of elements where the Lewis model really works. Lithium, in this case, is group 1A. So as a result, it only has one valence electron, and you can work this out using electron configuration as well. Beryllium, in this case, has two Valence electron is group 2A, boron is group 3A, so 3, and then 4A, 5A, 6A, and 7A. So that will be the easiest way to determine how many valence electrons just by looking at these group number. Okay, so if you have group 7A, like fluorine for example, you're going to have 7 valence electrons. If you're noble gas, which is group 8A, you're going to have 8 um, valence electrons. Okay as represented by neon right there. The Lewis model, the way they're go it's going to illustrate bonding is by drawing these symbols and then try to make sure that every atom has an octet 
configuration or eight electrons around its valence shell. Okay. Now I point out here in the lecture slide that this particular model works very well for a large number of compounds, especially organic compounds, organic molecules that is molecules that contain only carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and halogens. As you note here, if you look carefully, most of these are second period elements and there's a reason why they work so well for second period elements which we will discuss in the next video. So the main point to get across with the Lewis model is just that basically if you have molecules in which atoms do not satisfy the octet rule, they will not exist in this case. So only molecules that satisfy the octet rule will exist. Okay, and we'll do an example of this in the next slide, but before I do that, let me just get through some terminologies. In the Lewis model, a dot is uh, representing one electron. So a pair of dots would then re represents a pair of electron. Now a pair of electron can be a pair of electron between two atoms or two nuclei, which is shown by the black uh, pair right here, or it could be a pair of electrons that's located on one of the atoms, okay, or one of the nuclei. Now, if it's being shared by two nuclei, then that's referred to as a bonding pair, which is shown right here. And then, like the purple one in this case, if it's just belonging to one of the uh, atoms, then it's called a lone pair. Okay, that's the terminology of Lewis. A bonding pair can also be represented as a line. So, in other words, this particular structure could be just drawn right like this. However, the lone pair always has to be shown as a pair of dots. You can't draw it as a line. So one of the importance of the Lewis model is that it allows you to predict why certain molecules will not exist and why certain molecules or certain ions exist. So in this case, very simple example is water is going to have the following Lewis structure. Once you start to draw Lewis structure, you'll learn how to draw the structure of water. But this would be the structure of uh, water from the Lewis model. And as you can see in this case, all of these atoms, in this case the hydrogen has two electrons, remember that line represents a pair. The other hydrogen can also claim a pair of electrons, and then of course the oxygen in the middle can claim all eight electrons. So in other case, in water, all of these atoms actually satisfy the octet rule, of course satisfy the noble gas configuration rule. Um, H3O plus is also another unique example, but it also might not seem like something that would exist, but it actually does, and the structure looks something like this, and you can easily see here that, again, each hydrogen has a pair of electrons, which means it satisfies that noble gas configuration rule, and then the, hydrogen, uh, the oxygen in the middle also has eight electrons, so that means that the oxygen also satisfies the octet rule, okay? But this molecule H3O would not exist, and the reason is because there's no way you can draw H3O that has the same structure like what we would draw for H3O plus. If you were to do H3O, what you're going to get is you're going to get an extra electron right here, which then violates the octet rule for oxygen. So oxygen, if you count this, would have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and that by the Lewis model is not allowed. It's not a structure that's allowed. So that's really the power of the Lewis model. It's that it is going to allow you to predict whether certain molecules or ions would exist or not based on whether they satisfy the octet rule or not.